everyone, welcome back. Today I bring you something else that started out as just a toy for my entertainment that turned into something a little bit more useful. A 3D printed supercharger and turbine. Well, anyways, this originally started out as a way to test the housings and how well they print without wasting too much plastic. And well, that's progressed into this. So before we get too far into this, I got all the way through all of the testing and all of this without realizing that somewhere along the way my model got mirrored and it's actually spinning in the wrong direction or well, it spins in the right direction but it's trying to spin in the wrong direction so it's really inefficient and I should be able to get a lot more out of it overall. I will do a quick video and rerun most of the tests real quick just to see what I come up with. However, that's going to be on the next video because I realized this issue while I was editing this video. So, for now, all of my testing will be powered by my little shop vac here and connected to the turbine through a little adapter I printed. And here I'll give you a taste of what it sounds like. Careful, it's loud. Well, messing around with this thing, which by the way is probably pretty dangerous and they shouldn't be just swinging it around like that because the uh, it adds a lot of extra force on the bearings. But anyways, I noticed that if I covered part of the outlet, it, it changed the pitch. So I ended up going with a cone on the outlet to see if it makes any difference. Well, that definitely makes it sound more angry and makes me want to hang on to it less and less. Either way, I decided to run this through my normal battery of tests for this type of device and see what kind of difference that tail cone actually makes. Well, that's not very impressive, but keep in mind this is the smallest air pump that I have created other than the aquarium pump so that's not too bad and I'm seeing about 1 psi which isn't too bad notice the amount of compressor surge now to put the exhaust cone on and see what the differences are well it looks like there's a slight improvement but not really much to be noticed Mind you, my scale is pretty coarse, so. And as for pressure, it seems to be a little bit more. Of course, again, deadheading a compressor like this isn't really a good way to test it. And I'm seeing more compressor surge, which usually means more power transfer. So it's a good thing. Well, with the intent of trying to quantify any of the power differences I produced another housing frame and then made this little mount here and the cool part about this is that 25 millimeter thread and 6 millimeter drive lug hooks up to anything else I've ever made that fits that style so all the generators and stuff I already have parts for and I don't have to remake And right about here something goes terribly wrong I make some minor adjustments but it doesn't hang on for too long either way
So it turns out this little back bushing I made ended up rubbing on the outer part of the race of the bearing, getting really hot and messing up the fit all around and causing everything to rub. To solve this problem, I'm going to use the same spacers that I used behind the turbine and the impellers on the turbocharger. However, this is something I intended to do originally and just missed it. So with some new ones printed, I'm ready to go back together. Well, that seems to do the trick. It sure sounds a lot healthier. So on to making a new baseline with the bearings properly set up. So I'm gonna round that up to 62 just to keep the numbers even. This actually is pretty impressive to me. I wasn't really expecting it to work this well. And I'm going to move on to an amperage test. So I'm just going to run this to a dead short and see what kind of amperage I get. Now I just got to tap this because I don't want to hurt my voltmeter. It's a cheap one, but still. And I'm getting 0 0.08 amps, which is a little bit lower than I expected, but not too bad considering the size of the motor. I'm also probably over revving it. It's probably not meant to spin this fast, being as stepper motors usually never spin this fast. So with this standalone turbine, I've actually been running a slightly modified housing from the one shown on the turbo. As you can see here, the one that stand alone currently is the shorter cross section or the three millimeter vent size. P.S. I don't actually professionally design any of this stuff, so if I'm screwing up on terminology anywhere, I apologize. Either way, with that being said, I'm going to do the tests with the wider opening housing and see what the differences are. And this here is where I really should have noticed that the turbine and the impeller are opposites of each other. But, you know, it's too busy paying attention to other stuff. And a test with no generator on it just to make sure everything works well. In this, you can identify the wider housing as the dirty one. As you can see here with the voltage being about two volts higher it's definitely spinning a little bit faster so that's a win for the wider housing and I uh, gotta make that about four volts higher as for the amperage it seems to be about the same however with the higher voltage we do end up with more wattage being that the amperage stayed consistent this isn't a very effective test to measure up against reality but it's a good enough test to compare between the two different housings and also give me somewhat of a baseline to work from down the road now to turn this into something a little more useful now I screwed up on the length here by a little bit, but it'll work. I also just gave this just a little bump as the pump is to be lubricated with water, so running it dry is a problem. So I have my turbo pump here and my jug of dechlorinated water, and I'm going to fill my aquarium, or at least make an attempt to. It's running pretty good actually. It sounds pretty funny under load and you can actually see that my poorly sealed pump housing is 
pissing water everywhere, which means the pressure is pretty good considering the head that's on this and the little tiny hose that it's got to push it through. So the hose came out of the water and it lost its prime. I'm going to try and restart it and see what happens. So without any water in the pump, it wasn't lubricated very well. It started to grab and pulse, which then caused the impeller to vibrate off. I am trying to use a like clamp system on that impeller, but it doesn't work very well. So for future use, I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue. At any rate, with everything reassembled, I grabbed another jug with a fresh prime. And I'm going to continue to fill the aquarium. This ended up doing its job, however, by the end it was pretty much ready to fall apart. Now, these bearings are rated for 4500 RPM, however, without something pushing up against the face of them, they seem to run a little loose, which is fine. Not really the best, but I gotta keep everything in tension, otherwise it'll vibrate apart and cause issues. Overall, that's about all I have for now. While I'm recording this, I'm printing the mirrored version of the impeller, or turbine I should say. The impeller head was the right direction, it was the turbine that's the wrong direction. And hopefully in a few days after dropping this, I'll compile a quick little video just showing the differences in the proper direction of the turbine. And maybe with any luck, something will blow up. Things look good when they blow up. Usually draws a lot of attention. At any rate, this is about all I got for you guys right now. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.